this video we're going to look at the Roland R8. Uh, I'm using the Mark II which is almost identical to the original R8. There's a difference here on the pads. Simply here I believe you had instead of choosing pad banks which is a selection of sounds over here you had user defined functions and here as well you have an instrument list and a temporary assign. Uh, those were different, but, but fundamentally the machine is uh, more or less identical. There was a theory that the converters were different on the Mark I and the Mark II, probably put out by someone who wanted to sell their Mark I, saying it sounded better. It doesn't. I've had both. They sound the same. In fact, the converters are the same. There may be some different uh, components, obviously, because um, I think the initial R8 came out something like six or seven years before the Mark II, but fundamentally they sound the same and they both sound uh, great. So I think it's one of the best machines Roland made. As a drum machine, um, the, the samples are excellent if you like the, the sort of fat, warm uh, type of sounds. When it came out, probably its main competitor was the Yamaha RX-5. I had that as well. That was a great machine in its own way, but I never liked the samples as much. They were much um, more aggressive, perhaps, and uh, it certainly had none of the classic uh, analog samples that the Roland has. So first of all, let's look at the hardware. Um, I'll try and pop up a photo of the back, but in effect, what you have on the back is a left and right output for the stereo outputs. Then you have eight mono outputs. Um, not monophonic, just uh, mono. So you could assign any of your sounds to any of the outputs. And if they're in the stereo output, you can pan them wherever you like. Although there is only something like seven settings uh, from left three to right three. Um, you have a contrast button and then you have two memory card slots. One is a ROM slot and one is a RAM slot. So the ROM slot is where you could add samples. These were sold by Roland, but I'll put a link in the description because there is a company now offering a card where you can load your own samples onto the card and then use them in the Roland R8. Hopefully I'll be getting one of those cards at some point in the near future. The other card slot is a RAM slot, which is for storing your patterns, your songs and your settings. Then you also have the power input, which is on a weird three pin connector and the power supply is somewhat weird too. It's a plus minus 10 volt DC supply. It's a pain if these die or if you buy a machine without one, um, they're not easy to find. So bear that in mind if you do find a machine, uh, make sure it's got the original power supply. Then you have the classic MIDI in, out and through connectors. Next to them you have a tape sync in and out, so you could synchronize to analog tape. Then you have a foot switch for start stop, and then you have a, a value input, which would be for something like the Roland EV5 or 10 pedals. So you could control this slider from a foot pedal. This could be useful, as we'll see later when programming patterns. I've never done it. So now let's turn the machine on. When we turn it on, it goes into song mode, and I'll quickly play the demo song. Having initialized the unit, this is the demo song that came on the R8 Mark II.
So song mode is like most drum machines. You build up a song with the patterns that you have programmed or the preset patterns. Um, so that's fairly self-explanatory and uh, I don't think this is something that's important to go through on the machine. If we go to pattern mode, you have four options. You have play, step, reel, and preset. Play is simply where you will choose any of the patterns that are in the memory. And play them directly. As you can see in the display, below each pattern number, you see the time signature. This one is in 9-8 and the feel, which is a function you can add, which offers um, quite a bit of flexibility in the R8. It's uh, a, a combination of uh, timing and uh, velocity uh, that gives a certain feel to the pattern. If we press pattern again, we can see step. There you will go into step mode. Um, I won't be covering that right now because I don't often use it. Um, but perhaps I'll do a second, a second video on that uh, if people want to see that. The real time mode is the one I really want to get into. Number four is preset mode. And there are a certain number of preset patterns in the machine that cannot be erased. To pattern three, yet again, we see the pattern but we are automatically in write mode when we press start. So you can see the light flash red telling us that we're in pattern mode. What I'll do is I'll choose an empty pattern, something like 70. I can simply choose it by typing in from the keypad or using the value or the up and down. Now what we can do here is re-initialize the pattern in order to specify how many bars the pattern is. We do shift and clear, and then it says pattern format, pattern 70. The time signature, we can go to by moving with the cursors. I'll leave it at 4-4, but you can specify anything from one up to eight. And here, I think you can do, yeah, six, eight, 12, 16, 24, 32. So for me, 4-4 four, four is fine. But one bar is a little bit short, so almost always I'll specify two bars or four bars. Then I press Enter, and the pattern has been formatted, and we can see it says pattern 70 with a two after it, which implies it's two bars long. Now, to program, you simply press Start, Stop, and hit the pads. One setting that's useful is the metronome set. First of all, the timing of the metronome. So a quarter beat or a variety. I tend to leave it on a quarter. Then by pressing select, we can also choose when the metronome plays. So I have it set to empty record. What that means is it will click when the pattern is empty. But once the pattern has played through one time, the metronome will go off. This is quite useful because you do a lot of programming in the R8 in write mode. And the metronome, if it was on all the time, would get annoying. So I like the fact that you can have it set to be there when you're initially setting up the pattern. But the moment it's gone around once, you don't need it because what you've played is there to give you the tempo. Every record will just keep the metronome on all the time and you have off. But let's keep it on empty record. Now we'll start recording a pattern. So as you can hear, the metronome has disappeared. But I know where the one is, so I can continue to add without losing tempo.
So we've done the kick and the snare. By the way, this is a pad bank that I created using 808 style sounds from the internal memory of the R8, and I have the electronic card as well. And I think I'm using the kick and the snare from there. One thing that we should also consider is uh, the quantize factor. So we've set it to 16th here. Uh, obviously that can be set to uh, whatever you want. Um, you have to go with the cursor and then you scroll through the possible options. I usually leave it on 16th. High is, is unquantized, but to a certain extent it's not really unquantized. It's at the highest level the R8 can record, uh, which wouldn't be as high as uh, more modern machines, which could potentially have no quantizing. It's still somewhat quantized, but you, you don't hear it. It's, it's still free. I'll leave it on 16th. Now I'm going to add the hi-hat. But what I'm going to do is use the roll function. To use that, we can specify the roll function by using the shift button, which activates the functions at the bottom of each pad. So the pads as they are now is simply triggering the sounds. If we press shift, you can choose functions. I'll choose roll set and we can see the resolution of the roll. It's set to 16th notes, which is ideal for hi-hats. So now I'll program a simple hi-hat. So there we have a dead simple beat and you can use the Roland R8 like that. It's super fast, super simple, and that would be excellent in its own. But you can do so much more with the R8, and this is why I consider it one of the greatest drum machines Roland ever made. So the function I'd like to show now is the option to adjust the parameters of the sounds after you've recorded them in real time. While the machine is playing, if I press page down here, you can see that a new window appears and by pressing the select button I can scroll through a variety of options. The initial one is velocity. So if I want to program a different velocity for say the hi-hat, I can either tap the key and it will write that note at 64 MIDI velocity, but it won't be programming the actual notes. I'm simply changing the velocity of the notes rather than any timing. But I can also control that with this slider. So if I want to make the hi-hat full volume, I just simply put that at 127, press and hold it. If I want to make it quieter, I lower the velocity, press and hold the hi-hat. Obviously the pads are velocity sensitive, so you can program in real time controlling the velocity with how hard you hit the pads, obviously. But this I find a much more interesting way of adjusting the dynamics and the other parameters. So the next parameter by pressing select is pitch. This is where it gets very interesting. So what I'll do is I will play the pattern, tap the hi-hat, and if I touch the hi-hat pad and move the value slider, I can change the pitch of the hi-hat by m many octaves up or down.
So as you can hear, suddenly the machine doesn't sound like any drum machine that I know of. I can do the same with the open hi-hat, the kick and the snare. So if I wanted to pitch the snare down for just one of the hits, I simply can adjust this to say seven cents down, which is uh, seven semitones down. And by simply pressing and holding the snare button over the sound I want to adjust, it will pitch it down. I'll put them all back to zero simply by selecting zero and holding my finger on the snare pad. The next function we have is decay. And this, for example, is a very nice one for adding an extra boom to say the kick drum. So on the one of the pattern, I will extend the kick drum by say 30. I've selected the value here. Now, yet again, I play the pattern. And when I want the kick to change, I just have to press and hold the kick button slightly before the kick is coming that I want to extend and let go before the next kick appears. So I hope you can hear that the kick is uh, the decay of the kick is extended on the very first beat. I'll add a clap pattern and then I'll show you the next possible function. I'll go back to the record page by simply pressing page again and now I can overdub sounds by tapping the pad. So I press page again, we're back in the real-time edit mode. And the next function is nuance. It's uh, more or less a, a kind of brilliance or um, it goes between being darker and fuller and thinner and brighter. But this one is pan and it's automatically defaulted to off, but by moving these, we can see there are the other possibilities. Left three, two, one, up to center, right one, two, three, and then off, if you don't want any panning. So what I'm going to do is put it in the center to start with, and I simply play the pattern, hold my finger on the clap, and then I can pan the clap from left to right.
So there you can see how you can really change a pattern completely. If we go back to another pattern and I show you on the hi-hat simply, uh, you'll see how creative the machine can be. So it's a one bar pattern and simply by going to pitch, pressing this, Then on top of this, you have a lot of other functions here, some of which are very useful. So for example, taking this pattern, if I just want to take the hi-hat out of this pattern to start a new pattern, I can do shift pattern extract. And then to pattern 72, I can extract whichever sound I choose. So I'll select the hi-hat, press enter. Now if we go to pattern 72, I've simply copied the hi-hat. So there you see the pattern programming on the R8 is pretty amazing in my opinion. I don't know another drum machine that does it so easily and so well, and the sounds are extremely solid. If you run this drum machine with the individual outs through a decent mixing desk, it's really one of the greatest drum machines built, in my opinion. I know they've gone up in value somewhat, but you can still find the R8 Mark II even for under 500 euros, sometimes a lot less, maybe 300. Of course, you can always get lucky, but I'd say between three and 500. And the Mark I is something around 150 to 300 euros. The electronic memory card is very useful because it has the 808 sounds. The original R8 didn't have any 808 sounds, or not many, built in, and you needed the electronic card. The R8 Mark II has some of those sounds, but they're still not the same as on the memory card. Um, and like I said at the beginning, what's very interesting is that a company has built a, a card that you can add your own samples to you, via USB. So you can change the samples on the card uh, and you can then have your own samples on the R8 and use all of these functions that I just showed. Uh, on your own samples. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Okay, so I hope that's a, a, a quick, clear um, example of how to use the functions on the R8 for creating a pattern using the real-time edit function.